Meet Coco. She led a relatively normal life until her husband of 15 years passed away suddenly. That tragedy unleashed something inside of her that she can't and doesn't want to control. What happened to you after your husband passed away? It's hard to say because I just uh, didn't realize anything right away. But I found myself, um, right away I found myself like a, a fish out of a, a bowl, you know? Somehow out of your element. And, but there is another side of you that somehow it's either you have to survive or and just take what's there and try to make something of it or forget it. I had no one there to, to take care of me. So you're feeling grief, you're feeling depression, you're feeling alone. Sadness, very sad, yes. And so then what, what happens out of this sadness? Out of the sadness, somehow there was like two extreme things that were there in my life at that time is that the reality was so tragic, so dramatic that either you just live by it and, and don't do anything about it, but you cannot go on. You have to balance it out by something as extreme as that tragedy in the other end of the pole, which was a lot of a distraction that would just be as powerful. Okay. And All right, but what kind of behavior comes about because you are grief-stricken that you've lost your husband? You come about feeling like very free. Free, more free than you ever been with. And free to just do things that you wouldn't do before. Such as? What did you do that was different? Such as something inside me was tingling all over inside my body. At first, I didn't know what it was. And then I started looking at men. And I would just look at them and say, hey, you know, somehow I can just go come on to him and just. And you started to what? Undress for, you, undress for men? Uh, you undress for no. your neighbor? <laughs> Yes, I, I masturbate a lot because somehow, because I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't feel like having a boyfriend. I had a lot of men that would call me on the telephone and I love to play with myself. It was like very, well, it was, I mean. All right, let, let, let me assume, and I'm not being disrespectful here, but there, there are millions and millions of, of women who, at some point in their life, lose their husbands. And yet, I'm not sure the reaction would necessarily be, despite the grief, despite feeling bad, that they would necessarily become s sexually active or... But uh, it's like a sort of a, 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 tri a reaction that's triggered within your own body and your own mind that somehow you try to, for surviving, you try to look at what is it with that tragedy that I, I can get something Okay, but what from. makes you an exhibitionist? To just enjoy myself with certain men that I cannot have. Well, explain that to me. What do you do? I just expose myself what? And, okay. and just let, you know, and thinking that maybe they would catch a glimpse of me. Now, is it purely exhibitionism? You get a charge out of exposing yourself to strange men? Yeah. I don't know if they are strange, but I, I feel... <laughs> Do you know these men? No. You don't know these men. No. You expose yourself in front of men that you mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. Where do you do this? You know, uh, I do it inside my house, like if it's an, my neighbor, or uh, and I just you know play with myself when he's I know he's looking at me. 
and and I'm and I can also and I can I do it like uh, in the mall. In the mall. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no. Okay, that, explain, explain, because I've been to the mall. No. <laughs> And I even window shop. But what do you do? What do you do in the mall? I would just lift my be with someone who would lift my skirt and expose my. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's interesting? You're having, and I understand it. Believe me, you're because I'm having difficulty talking about this. <laughs> You're having difficulty saying it. Well, if you have difficulty in saying what I you... even do it when you are on. You know, when you are on, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, and, you know, and I, I don't... No, but that's true, you know. I don't have anybody with me. I'm, I'm looking at you, and you turn me on. Go to your room. <laughs> Go to your room. Okay. What is it? But let me finish. We don't have that. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at you and you are always, you know, talking forward to, to the camera like that. Right? And, and I just talk to you back and I really like to be really wild. I just... <laughs> I just, okay. I just push the sheets back, and then I, I talk to you. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna just believe you. When we come back, a I, husband. I say, Jerry, just okay, look at yes. me. Yes. Okay. When we come back. <laughs> Jerry, just yeah, look at me and join myself. Just have your attention for a second. When we come you. back, a husband and wife who make love in public and sometimes get paid for it. We'll be right back. <laughs>